My name's Guy Kesteven. I've been a professional bike tester for nearly 25 years and today I'm heading up the dales on an after work micro adventure with downhiller stuntman, all time outdoor superhero Rob Jarman on two titanium adventure gravel bikes the Titus Silk Road and the on one Rocky Road. So hopefully the weather's going to clear up and we'll have a cracking night out. Sorry, Rob's just waxing lyrical about now having a weight on the back because he's loaded up more rear heavy it's just making the forks flow a bit nicer but to be fair these are really flowing well anyway that's why you go for titanium that and the fact they're significantly lighter than a steel bike i mean compared to the boot zipper which is steel frame steel fork i think these are four kilos lighter before they're loaded, I think silk road that Rob's on is 11 and a half. This is 11.7. Plus, you've got that, I mean, as good as the boot zipper rides, you've got that carbon fork smoothness and then the spring of the titanium. These are flowing along beautifully. I can hear my tin mug going, that's for sure. Yeah, on the angles, they're fairly tight. 70 degree head. 74 seat so you know they're agile rather than docile but still doing nicely through a little bit of single track and i have to say i'm surprised how forgiving they are and here we are looking about on the school night and back in time for work tomorrow oh, this is ace I'm loving this little mini adventure. Just, yeah, I keep being blown away how smooth these are over the rocks. Even on these, you know, proper XC time. I mean, Rob's got the Fire XC Pros on his. Got a bit more grip, but even on those, because he got that little bit of compliance, happy days. So, just stopped off for a bit of tea in uh, Petty Bridge at the pizza place so uh, bikes are going great so far you know nothing's come loose really smooth and uh, yeah great having that carrying capacity as well enjoying it Rob? absolutely yeah it's <laughs> oh, just such a spot on night and Rob was just saying it's like you know he does a lot of long distance running races and just something different yeah. just getting right out into Middle of bloody nowhere. I mean, I'm normally coming up here, absolutely flat knacker, breathing out my ass. And these are just cruising, just rolling up here, nice as pie. And I've done this on a gravel bike in, in summer, unloaded, and oh, that was grim. Just after they first surfaced it, it's proper messy up ahead, but happy days with a Big 29er tyre on. Right, the only trouble is I'll put my shell jacket and my shorts on now. It's a bit breezy up here and uh, it sounds like a one-man band coming down behind me, but steady away. Surprising how short footed these are. And you know, they have got forks for a dropper post. If you need them. And, yeah, that'd be nice with a dropper post, I'm not gonna lie. If I was doing more of this kind of stuff, I'd definitely think about plugging one of them in. But uh, that's the great thing, it's the versatility of them, because you can swap these forks out with a suspension fork as well. They're right geometry for 100mm suspension fork. If you want to do that? <laughs> right back when we started. <laughs> no suspension. We didn't have disc brakes then, we'd have been just careering off down here into the distance. Mind the rabbit. And Rob's got us a nice little uh, Airbnb down the bottom by all accounts. Right. I think this is it. Our hotel for the night. <laughs> Look at that. Five star I reckon that Rob. Nice and dry. <laughs> Time to get a brew on. My little fire maple stove. Tell you what, Rob, this is cracking accommodation. There we go. 
grew on. Well, Rob's on the quality whiskey then. Yeah. A nice little blend, I believe. From Murray at uh, Glentress Hotel. Very nice. Out there for a bite lunch. Cheers for that, lad. Nice and sweet. Oh, I can smell that from here, that's nice. I can there taste a go. hint of orange in that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to be fair, I'm amazed, I'm amazed we can't taste a major heap of sheep <laughs> shit in here. <laughs> I thought this was going to be absolutely <laughs> mean. And what have you learnt from riding gravel today, Al, compared to normal bikes? <laughs> it's a proper interview, this, Rob. <laughs> I don't know, I've just really, it's just been really mellow, actually. Yeah, surprisingly smooth. Just, you know, take it steady away. You know, there's no suspension on them and you don't want to rattle your panniers off so yeah but actually we've covered ground really really quickly but just you know without getting ourselves into a steaming stupor or hurting ourselves just being really mellow just catching up with Rob having a great chat and now we're here this is fantastic you know a bit of whiskey a bit of sleep and ready to go again in the morning spot on so cracking night's sleep genuinely really really lovely night's sleep these are pretty much perfect uh, Stove's on for water for porridge. Rob's having his hot chocolate already. But just look at that view. That is not bad to wake up to, folks. Not bad at all. Arrive late, leave early, and leave absolutely no trace. Them's the rules, folks. And if you do know where this is, don't put it in comments, because, you know, just enjoy it yourself, yeah? We don't want a whole ton of people up here because it is beautiful, but I doubt the farmer will be writing. To right, time to uh, get rolling and warm up a bit. I have to say, I've just jumped back on again. Roll beautifully along here. Oh, that wasn't meant to be a damn pub, by the way, but yeah, I've made it. Gratuitous scenic beauty shot here. <laughs> So, just to recap, Rob's on Titus, Silk Road, that's the top end bike of the pair, you know, butted tubing, you can see, really nice curve, top tube and down tube detailing there, more CNC machine detailing as well on the stage, so chain stays are a bit shorter, and then I'm on the on one rocky road so plain gauge tubing but all the same features pretty much uh, you know bag mounts four triple bottle mounts and uh, then either standard conventional rack mounts or uh, that triple bolt rear mount, rack mount as well which uh, they'll be doing a specialist rack for so well fully equipped adventure bikes and both of these really smooth titanium frames so why get an adventure bike like this over a gravel bike I mean obviously you got flat bars I mean they're pretty narrow these carbon bars but they're still a lot wider than a drop bar And you've also got a lot more tyre room. I mean, these bikes will take up to a 29 by 2.6, so you can have a properly floated ride. I mean, actually running much thinner, narrow tyres at the moment, but even then, it's a lot wider than a 700 by 50 or a 700 by 45 if you're running a 225. So, and just a slightly more upright position as well for cruising you know rather than getting your head down and going a bit faster so you know the angles are actually pretty similar on these bikes compared to you know something like the Titus Gold Rush so it's just that you know a little bit more wheelbase a little bit more bar width and off to stem and stuff like that, just makes them a little bit more controllable and capable off-road. So, you know, and it just gives you a little bit more insurance if it's rocky as well. You're less likely to 
pinch of tube bob blow a tire. This is more rubber and air underneath. This SX Eagle gearing really is a help <laughs> when it comes to winching a loaded bike up these steeper sections. But again, lovely pedaling for you. From the titanium, it's funny. You have to push these bikes through a gate. Suddenly, very aware of the weight we're carrying. But when we're just pedalling along, happy days. Rolling nicely, thank you very much. And I have to say, I am really impressed by how smooth this self off carbon fork is, even with it bagged up. Tubed rather than tubeless setup. Rolling along, a, you know, impressively forgiving. And it's long enough that you can just slot a suspension fork straight in there if you want. And, you know, because the bikes are all built to order, in Rotherham, you can have whatever bars you want on there from their range, grips, saddle, tyres. You know, there's normally a good range of various kit you know they're all self-cough own brand stuff pretty decent and you know the prices are always absolutely bargain <laughs> you know not only are the frames really really good value because they work with the vendors to source all the best deals they can but you know they're always on the lookout for the best deal on componentry as well and because they've got that reputation, people actually go to them and go, right, I've got this. Here's a very good price. How many do you want? And because, you know, such a well-established company and they've got some proper financial off-power behind them, they can just buy in bulk, pass those savings on to you. Happy days. Even if the weather's going a bit grim up here now. No need suspension anyway. When you got a bit of a roll on, smooth things out pretty nicely. The only thing I should definitely have done is fitted a fender. Because the spray is just burying the camera. So it's probably gonna go into mud vision shortly, but it takes me right back bombing down stuff like that without suspension but it's a lot easier on 29er wheels with disc brakes than it was on 26 on steel forks with uh, cantilever brakes that's for sure that a bit gone straight into this gate I reckon wouldn't we Rob <laughs> and the other thing you don't want to sound like a herd of I'll find cattle. Make sure you keep your tea mug and your gas canister separate. And of course, these bikes are so versatile that you know all the same things that work for being out here. You know that cargo capability, that smoothness and toughness of the titanium, that lovely ride feel, that easy speed. You know, it's every bit as valid when you're going around town or commuting or just cruising around, whatever you want to do. Look at the angles and the fact it'll take 100 mil suspension fork means, you know, they make a decent XD bike out of this because 11 and a half kilos, even with SRAM SX, is not bad going at all. And of course, you can buy frame and forks as a package if you want and build it up with, you know, some proper Gucci kit. Make a proper super bike out of it, because it's certainly on the silk road that Rob's riding. You know, the attention to detail on that is beautiful, but the, and the ride quality, yeah, it's fractionally better with those butted tubes, but even this bike, just the fact it's got that titanium spring and life and drive to it, that's what really makes them stand out. Absolutely cracking all round as these. So, I mean, we've, uh, as you can see, the weather's kind of beginning now. 
Uh, not sure how much film or filming I've got done, so I hope you've enjoyed this little micro adventure feature. And uh, I'll just do a tech talk on the Silk Road and then another one on the Rocky Road. And then, uh, yeah, we'll tap home. But well, this has been an absolute hoot and really proved what these bikes are great for. Decent night out, Rob! <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Rob keeps asking me what happens with these bikes after filming and whether he can sneak one away. I reckon that's about the best sign of uh, whether someone's enjoyed something. Especially when you've ridden as many bikes as Rob has. Cracking job, as per usual, from Tysha to non one. And not a bad job from the Yorkshire Dales either, to be fair. There we go. I think given the weather from here on in roll it out on the road which again is where that lightweight and these fast driving Victorias really come in handy shooting along no bother get ourselves back down the day for some breakfast alright well for some more breakfast anyway <laughs> already had pipe porridge and a pie at the top yeah, but another brew. Another brew wouldn't go down badly.